Welcome back. All right, so a debate that's going around the hockey world again right now, and it's it's kind of a constant debate, is the debate over who the greatest goal scorer of all time is. And there are a few ways to look at it. If you look at just the pure goals, it's Wayne Gretzky, 894 goals. And you know what? Uh, Gretzky, in his time, passed up on goals he could have gotten in order to pass the puck to teammates. He preferred to pass and get guys like Gary Curry the goal. Uh, so, and, and Luke Robitaille and various others, depending on where he was playing at the time. But I, I can understand why people would still say Wayne Gretzky. And it's the possibility, too, that even if Gretzky is no longer number one on the board, there may be that argument. Now, the argument also stands of, hey, during Gretzky's era, there was a lot more scoring. True, yes. However, uh, he was scoring at such a huge rate above everybody else. And like I said, and then he decided he'd, he'd be pass first instead. Uh, I, again, you can make that argument the greatest goal scorer of all time. Uh, Gordie Howe, 801 goals. ton of goals in his career. I talked about his career yesterday. And it, it is hard to argue with a guy who played into his 50s, who played and scored 174 goals in the WHA. So you tack that on, that's 975. You include the goals scored during playoff games. He had well over a thousand goals in his career, so you can make the argument of Gordie Howe as well as Ovechkin, who scored a lot of his 800 goals during an era where there was a lot less scoring. Now the scoring's back up. It's not quite where it was in the 80s, but it's definitely up. So we're going to hear that argument about goal scorers now, where guys who are coming up now may have an easier time getting to 40 or 50 goals, and so when they get to those heady totals, if that's to happen. Uh, we'll be having this debate again. So that could be a long time from now, though. So if you're looking at goals per game, and this is one way to look at it, is Mike Bossy, right? So I'm wearing an Islanders jersey because, yes, I believe that Ovechkin, best goal scorer ever, I'm, I'm willing to say, sure, we can we can do that, but I would put Mike Bossy at number two. 0. 0.762 goals per game. Uh, the best of anybody who's had 200 goal minimum. Now, Bossy was forced to retire before his time. And there's the argument of, well, wait a minute, Bossy's goal scoring would have slowed down, which it likely would have. Um, and if he had tried to play through his back issues, it definitely would have. But for Mike Bossy, uh, he is still the guy who's got 0.762 goals per game. And then there's Lemieux, 0.754. And the argument can be made for Lemieux as well. So we're up to five guys who I think can be argued the greatest goal scorer ever. In that for Lemieux, it's a .754 number, and he had injuries that shortened his career as well. And even when he came back from retirement to play, he was still very good and put up excellent point totals. So you can make the argument for Mario Lemieux. And then if you look down the list, you've got Cy Danini, .751, Babe Die, .746, who played before sticks were curved. So, right? Uh, but the game was a little bit different back then. Uh, Matthews, 0.627. Yes, Austin Matthews currently at 0.627 goals per game, which people will point out. Uh, a, there's more scoring now than there was when Ovechkin came into the league. And B, he's still very young. That number is probably going to come down. And it could, and it probably does. It'll depend in all likelihood on where he's playing and just the ability to avoid injury, the ability to stay as healthy as possible and just keep producing. Pavel Bure's on the board, 0.623. Might be the most exciting goal scorer in NHL history. Again, there's another debate for you. Uh, Bure, 60 goal seasons, played very well in his career, shortened by injury as well. Otherwise, he might have had 800 goals. Uh, I, I think if he'd stayed healthy, I think he would have gone for that kind of a lofty total. Ovechkin sitting at 0.613. It's above Gretzky at 0.601. And I think important to remember, too, is that at this point in his career, Gretzky's goal scoring was basically done. Ovechkin is still producing goals at a really high rate. Uh, Brett Hall, 0.584, just above his dad, Bobby Hall, at 0.574. And Bobby Hall, the argument can be made as well, because when he came in, you're looking at uh, straight sticks. Eventually, he would become part of the curved stick uh, fraternity, which we will talk about, uh, because there's there's a lot to get into, and I don't think there's a right answer in terms of who the greatest goal scorer is, because you're, you're getting into a different territory than just saying who the top goal scorer. Top goal scorer is Gretzky, 
Ovechkin's threatening that record. Done. But your greatest goal scorer, your best goal scorer of all time is a different argument. And Maurice Richard belongs in this discussion because at a .556, most of those scored during an era where, yeah, it's flat sticks, um, not curved. It, it makes a big difference. And he scored 50 goals in 50 games playing hockey that way. And, and a much shorter uh, schedule. We can have the argument over player talent and all that stuff. And that's that's a whole other discussion for a whole other time. That's why I don't compare across eras. This is as close as you're going to get to me comparing across eras. And then there's others that I have to throw on the board. And there will be others people mention in the comment section because there's a lot of guys who can be mentioned. Yarmir Yager. If he'd played his entire career in the NHL, not gone to the KHL, odds are he's above Hull. Uh, Phil Esposito. Absolutely stunning goal scorer during his time. And I mean as a goal scorer. Not that he couldn't have been a handsome man. Sure. But he was a very good goal scorer. Tamu Solani, one of the greatest goal scorers of all time. I will agree with that. Marc Messier, another player who at times in his career probably passed rather than shot. And Guy Lafleur, who had really a remarkable run that then got overshadowed by Gretzky when Gretzky came into the league. Uh, Lafleur's time in, in Montreal came to kind of an unceremonious ending, which is too bad because... Um, Lafleur's career should have been longer than what it was because he came out of retirement to play for the New York Rangers and then he played in Quebec as well. And it showed he really didn't need to retire when he did. Lafleur could have been up in this area too. Not necessarily 800 goals, no, but higher on the list than where he is uh, in his career. So if we look at active goal scorers, because I, I've pointed out before, I, I don't think we have this debate again. I don't think we see anybody threaten 800 goals for a very long time. Crosby's the closest amongst active players with 534. And you can make an argument for Crosby. I would argue that with Crosby, the argument is more along the lines of all-around player. And if you're getting into who the greatest all-around player is in NHL history, I think the argument can be made more for Crosby, which is why the Crosby and Ovechkin debate is interesting to me. Is Ovechkin one of the best goal scorers of all time? Yes. Is Crosby one of the best players of all time? Yes. But can you make the opposite arguments? You can make the argument for Crosby with goal scoring Ovechkin. The defensive side of the game has always been kind of hit and miss with Ovechkin. So I think Crosby has him there. But again, that's a debate. And there's a reason that argument is out there. Uh, Stamkos, 497 goals. He's on the verge of 500. He'll get there very quickly. Malkin, 453. Eric Stahl, 442. With that one goal he scored for Florida, uh, he, he busted up a couple spots in the all-time scoring, and if he can get two more goals by the end of the year, he busts himself up a couple of spots again, but he's not going to be seen as one of the greatest goal scorers of all time. Pavelski and Kane are in there too. Kane, Patrick Kane, that is. 434, Pavelski, 431. Jeff Carter has 422 in his career. Parisi, 410. Corey Perry, 410. Parisi, 417, sorry. Perry and Bergeron have 410. Tavares, 405. And Phil Kessel, 404. Now, Matthews isn't going to be in this conversation for a while because Matthews currently has 274. So he's going to reach 300 goals maybe by the end of this season. It's 26 goals from here. That's highly reachable. And again, depends on health, depends on just goal scoring streaks, both hot and cold. But yeah, Matthews should be above 300 goals, should be threatening 400 goals by the end of next season. And there's an argument to be made of if he keeps that pace up of 0.627 and stays ahead of Ovechkin and Gretzky, uh, we can start to have that debate. But when he's at 400 goals, that's still 400 away from the record. That's the interesting thing, and that's something that really puts it into perspective. And I heard this during a broadcast the other night, which is that you reach 400 goals as a player. That is a really big milestone, right? And it's considered one of the uh, milestones that makes you a possibility for the Hall of Fame. And here's a guy with double that amount that hit 400 goals and then got 400 more and seems to be scoring them at a greater rate now than they were getting the goals at three or four years ago. So just a remarkable story. And if Matthews could follow that story, and it, I, I am not going to say it's not possible because the goals per game is right there, but it's it's a little dicey. Now, the, the other side of this is the players who were ahead of their time, right? So Stan Makita, did he invent the curved stick? You don't get a clear argument on that either. So the idea is that Stan Makita broke his blade and so it had a bend in it and then he used it and he's like hey this is this is great for taking shots this makes it so much easier to control the puck and then Bobby Hull 
got a hold of that too. And Bobby Hall, of course, uh, had some ridiculous curves on his blade. The reason that there's there's a limit on the curve to a hockey stick is because Bobby Hull and some of the goal scorers uh, back then really had a ridiculous curve on their blade and the NHL went, eh, this isn't going to work. Uh, one thing, of course, with those stronger curves is you have a weaker backhand. Uh, I've noticed in the NHL over the last, I'll say, five or ten years, the backhand's become more of a weapon again, but I can remember when those big blades, the big curves in the blades, meant, yeah, your backhand is not going to work. It's just going to roll right off your stick. So Andy Bathgate has uh, disagreed with the idea that Stan Makita invented the, bro the, the curved stick, saying that he broke his stick and realized that the curve gave him an advantage and loaned his stick to Stan Makita, who then used it in New York and decided this was a good way to go. So whether it is Bathgate, whether it is Makita, that came in in the 60s. So if you think about it, Richard put up 50 goals in 50, 50 games way before that. So it just makes it that much more remarkable with a flat stick. So all these guys that are doing all this, give them a flat stick and see how it works for them and then come back about Maurice Richard. And that's why Richard has to be on the board because no curve, wouldn't stick. None of these composites that give you all this extra uh, velocity on the puck. Like now guys can shoot 90 mile an hour pucks and it just looks easy. And you look at the you look at the the, the speed of the, the shot and you're like, 93 miles an hour from him? And it's a stay-at-home defenseman. But it's it's the technology, it's the strength of the players, it's the conditioning, and it's the the constant training the players go through. Now, Boom Boom Jeffreyon invented the slap shot. The slap shot isn't used as much in hockey as it used to be. Uh, slap shots are wildly um, unpredictable. So a guy winds up for a slap shot, you duck. I've, I've even done it in floor hockey, street hockey. You just do, you know, guy winds up for a slap shot. You're like, well, I don't know where this is going, so might as well duck. And yeah, um, it as as in as tough as it is to be able to execute a really accurate slap shot, uh, McKinnon was pretty good at that, or McKinnon, McKinnis uh, was pretty good at that. Uh, not that McKinnon can't do it too, but McKinnis is the one I was thinking of, Al McKinnis for, for the Flames especially, and then of course with the Blues. Uh, but yeah, it, it the slap shot is one of those really... It does it does it make Boom Boom Jeffrey on a, a a guy who brought in a shot that that was responsible for a lot of goals? Probably not. However, the snapshot is a combination of the wrister and the slapper, and I I've always liked the snapshot. When and again when I was when I was playing a lot, I I tried to work on the slap shot first, so work on getting that slap shot in order, and then work on the snapshot and use a similar style that you learn with the slap shot. And the snapshot itself, and I will come back to the argument about the slap shot as well. So don't worry, I can read what's on the board. I'll come back to that. But the snapshot, because I wanted to talk about this, and I was like, I, I like snapshots. Um, popular with Joe Sackick, Solani, Stamko, Sovechkin as just examples of really good goal scorers who've done that. They've also had good wrist shots as well. And if you have a good wrist shot, you're going to score goals in the NHL. That's just the way that works. Now, Boom Boom Jeffron inventing the slap shot at the NHL level is accurate, but the first rec record of a player using a slap shot was the Colored Hockey League's Eddie Martin, who was using a slap shot for the Halifax Eurekas just before the turn of the century, uh, late 1800s with that one. So, and, and it's, it's something that I'm not surprised somebody had thought of before Boom Boom Jeffreyon, because slapping the puck with your stick might have been done in a desperate desperation move, uh, maybe out of anger too, right? Uh, and then you're like, hey, if I get that on net. But there's there's that debate too about whether or not a slap shot means you're a really good goal scorer. Boom Boom Jeffrey on absolutely was. He, he really was. He was one of the better goal scorers of his time and is remembered as such. But again, uh, the argument over who the greatest of all time is is not going to be solved. There isn't really a mystery there because it depends on how we look at it. Again, um, I, I do think Ovechkin's the greatest goal scorer of all time. I do. I will throw that out there. But uh, Bossy is in the cate is in that category. Rocket Richard is in that category as well. That's why I'm not in favor of changing the Rocket Richard Trophy's name, because Richard was the first to score 50 and 50. And you can make the argument the greatest goal scorer of all time. And again, you can make that argument for Gretzky. You can make the argument for Lemieux and others. 
as I'm sure people in the comment section will mention. I, there were other players I could have put on this board, and I thought, no, um, I've got enough names up there, and I'm sure there will be other names to be debated in the comment section. So let me know your thoughts about who the greatest goal scorer is and how to even measure it. And again, you can, you can do um, era-adjusted numbers, but even that is kind of a flawed system in and of itself. So let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.